Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well. Today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is conniving. Conniving. Now, I would probably venture to say that you've probably never heard that term in a in a good light. It's always usually conniving, usually meaning something about somebody who's scheming and plotting and, and preparing to do evil. And that's exactly what I'm talking about today. Uh, the way that conniving people can be. Now, let's be very careful when we, anytime we're talking about, even like the psalmist here, as he's talking about someone else, it's in his, in his complaint and his argument is the same as we all would say is, God, don't you see what's going on? Uh, my word of caution is always, let's make sure we look in our own hearts first before we start looking around. Uh, we know we are not to judge, but we also know that we are uh, to see the fruit of others. And some people, let's just be honest. Uh, I, I have in the description here that, you know, it, it's it's a complete difference in falling into sin and flat choosing sin. And some people not only choose their sin, but they gloat about it and brag about it. So in that, I don't have to be a judge when you're flat telling me what you're doing wrong. And I've actually had this happen before. I've, I've heard someone actually tell me, hey, I know I'm going to hell. And then they continue to live their life the way that they wanted to. And and you just think about how sad of a statement that is that somebody says that they realize that, but I, I think when they say it, they really don't realize the gravity of it. But now today in this, in this Psalm, in Psalm 52 today, we're going to look at the first four verses of the Psalm, but I want you to kind of think about the fact that David is feeling betrayed and is betrayed by a friend. And he says, look, you've been scheming and everything else. And, and here's the thing that we all need to know. God sees all and God will judge all accordingly. And so we're going to look at the first part as, as, his, um, as David here is upset naturally, as we all would be. And listen to what he says. Psalm 52, looking at the first four verses, says, Why do you boast in evil, O mighty man? The goodness of God endures continually. Your tongue devises destruction, like a sharp razor working deceitfully. You love evil more than good, lying rather than speaking righteousness, Selah. You love all devouring words, you deceitful tongue. Now, he doesn't really hold back any punches. He's making sure he's sharing exactly what's on his, what's on his heart and what's on his mind. And can you, can you think about or imagine that there are those, you don't have to imagine very hard, that there are those who love evil more than good. But this is obviously somebody, a, a friend of his, somebody who would have known the goodness of God. And yet they still chose evil. See, it's something for us to look out in the world and say, okay, well, yeah, there's plenty of, of, of just pure evil out there that, yes, they're choosing evil. But what about those within the family of God? What about those, I would say, even within the self-proclaimed family of God? Those who claim the name of Jesus. This is why I say we have to look in our own hearts first to make sure we're not one of those that's conniving. Yes, I know we're all tempted and we're all, uh, we'll all tell a lie and we'll all be deceitful from time to time. But there's something about this particular person who is, who is bragging about the fact that they've told lies, bragging about the fact that they've been deceitful, bragging about the fact that they've maybe gotten other, people's into, uh, other people into hot water by the lies that they've told. You don't have to think long and hard about it to probably think of a similar situation that you've seen, either seen others go through, maybe you've experienced firsthand yourself, and you say, well, what are we to do? As believers, what are we to do when even those maybe the closest to us, not just our enemies, but even those closest to us seem to be conniving? Well, the thing that we need to remember, as it said throughout the Psalms, and even uh, one of the verses we'll look at at the end of the week, that even there, as the psalmist says, but I will trust in you. I will trust in you. And he's talking to the Lord. He says, Lord, I will trust in you no matter what else happens. You realize that no matter what anybody says, no matter what their plans or schemes are against you. I told you uh, our congregation Sunday 
that, you know, or a reminder that Satan is a walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, who he wants to annihilate, who he wants to destroy. So don't think that he won't use those closest to us. Don't think he won't use those who maybe mean the most to you, maybe have a lot of influence in your life, that those are the wounds that are going to cut the deepest. So that's the wounds he wants to use. That's the ones where he wants to stick the knife in a little bit further. And you say, what, are, what am I to do? We're to keep our eyes on Jesus. We're to do as David and, and, and cry out to the Lord in prayer. Cry out to him and saying, God, I don't understand, but God, I want to understand what you're doing. And I want to understand what your will is. And I, 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 I know, as we were talking about Sunday and Sunday school, that we know all things work together for good. So God, show me what that good is. Because no matter what the enemy is scheming up, we know that God's plan and God's will will be done. So let that be our prayer, that his will be done, not ours. God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.